Hello, this is Gary Emerald with another fire set chat at the gates of hell. You know, my position at Tentmaker Ministries, I get accused pretty much on a daily basis of uh, definitely on the way to hell. because I don't believe in hell. That is, I don't believe in the traditional concept of hell as taught by the Roman Catholic Church and the Protestant Church for the last 1,600 years or so. So I'm, uh, I'm labeled on a regular basis as a heretic definitely destined to be eternally damned to hell. And over the years that I've, I've had those accusations hurled at me pretty much on a regular basis, I'm convinced that the average person that sends me an email or a telephone call or, or whatever hasn't really thought through the concept of hell, what it really involves, and who's actually going there. I've been in hundreds, and I'm not exaggerating when I say that, but in hundreds of different churches of various different denominations, Roman Catholic, Greek Orthodox, Russian Orthodox, Baptist, Meth Methodist, Presbyterian, Charismatic, Kingdom, Pentecostal, you name it, uh, I've been there. And furthermore, I've studied the doctrine of eternal damnation in hell uh, a lot. I'm, I'm pretty good at, at understanding the subject. I'm convinced that the average person, uh, when they think about hell, they're really not, they're really not, uh, they haven't educated themselves as to what it's really all about and who goes there. Have you ever thought about, about hell in, in terms of, of really seriously putting yourself in a state of mind of like picturing someone there, picturing some strange person a thousand years ago who never heard the gospel, who never heard of Jesus, uh, just some native somewhere in South America or Asia or Africa, burning alive forever and ever and ever and ever. Can you take yourself out of your state of mind here in the United States or Britain or wherever, wherever it is and place yourself somewhere in the world in some other human being's uh, body and consigned to eternal damnation by the God you say you believe and worship? Think about judging and condemning 99% of the world into eternal damnation. Because if you take a look at the traditional gospel that the Roman Catholic Church and the Protestant Church has been teaching and preaching for centuries, the vast majority of the people in this world have never heard the name Jesus, nor have they declared Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. And the Bible says that no man can come to the Father except the Father draws him. And there's only one name under heaven in which men must be saved, and that is the name Jesus. If you look at the history of mankind, the vast, vast majority of people have never repented and confessed Jesus as Lord. Your doctrine if you're a traditional Christian, consigns these people to be tortured and tormented in, beyond anything that any human being on the face of this earth has ever done to another man. So let's talk about, let's think a little bit about who is in the hell that you believe in. Now, if I mention the name Hitler, obviously everyone's going to say, well, sure, he's in hell. He's the epitome of evil in the world. He's definitely toasting right now. How about Stalin? He's another good candidate. Most people would say that Stalin, the founder of, of uh, you know, the, the communist state in Russia that has killed millions of people and enslaved millions of people, 
He's he's definitely in hell, and and maybe uh, the, the the president of North Korea, you know, horrible horrible man, Pol Pot, in in Asia, you know, killed two three million people. He's probably definitely in hell too, right? Who else can you think of that is definitely deserving of eternal damnation? How about? Um, Oh, let's say Charles Manson, a serial killer. I don't know if this generation is familiar with him, but he was a pretty, pretty bad dude. Is he in hell? Think about it. How about another serial, serial killer, David Berkowitz? Now he was a, uh, uh, I think he was a New York serial killer. He was a Jewish guy who, uh, who killed a whole lot of people, went to jail, and in jail found Jesus Christ and began a ministry that has touched many, many people around the world. Serial killer, confessed Jesus as Lord, lifetime imprisonment, is he in hell? Charles Manson, is he in hell? There was a time in uh, church history when it was basically all Roman Catholic. And the, Ro the Roman Catholic Church condemned anyone and everyone apart from a, being a Roman Catholic to eternal damnation. And up popped all of a sudden this Protestant Reformation. Guys like John Calvin and uh, Martin Luther came up and all of a sudden there was a whole there are thousands of people in, in Europe that condemned the Pope and the, the whole Roman Catholic structure as Antichrist. They said the Pope would be in hell and all that he represents and all those who supported the Pope. And the Pope condemned the Lutherans and the Calvinists and the Anabaptists and whatever to hell. Which side is in hell? are both in hell. Have you ever thought about that? Like I've said, I've been in hundreds of churches and, and this message of hell is a very serious and important one to me. I asked a lot of pastors, what causes a person to, to go to hell? If you had a hundred pastors and you asked them questions about what, what would constitute a person uh, being consigned to eternal flames, you would get a lot of different answers. Anybody that went to 10 different churches and uh, you know, tried to live by, this, by the standards of all the 10 different churches to make sure that they escaped eternal damnation, the chances are they wouldn't stand a chance, a snowball's chance in hell of making it to heaven. I heard in a Pentecostal church here in town, uh, a, a young 21-year-old 20, guy a condemned to eternal damnation because he had a skinny little mustache that he wouldn't shave off because the pastor told him to shave it off because men shouldn't have facial hair. There are people who preach that if you have makeup on, you're going to hell. There are pastors who teach that if you don't tithe, you're going to hell. There are pastors that teach if you're not in their denomination, you're going to hell. There are pastors who teach if you're not baptized in a certain way, you're going to hell. My, whoever's listening right now, you need to pay attention. You need to stop. You need to take your mind and your heart and really, really focus on this subject of hell. And if you really believe that most of mankind is going there, would you take a look at your daily life and see whether you are warning people around you at, in your community and at your workplace that they're in danger of being tortured forever and ever by a God who is called love? Does your life reflect your belief that most of mankind is going to hell? Here's another scenario. We have a world war and we have a German ancestry Lutheran. 
here in the United States going to Germany to kill Lutheran Germans. Think about Jesus, think about the gospel, think about Jesus saying, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, do good to those who spitefully use you. And here we have in World War I and World War II, German Lutheran Americans, yeah, ancestry, going over to Germany to kill German Lutherans. Does that sound like anything re re related to Jesus Christ and his message? How about an American Roman Catholic going to Europe to kill Italian Roman Catholics? Do you see any logic? Do you see that what we're dealing with here is really insanity? And that's what the teaching of hell really is. And I think that's what the teaching of hell really does to many, many people, and they're not aware of it. You're insane for believing the, de the teaching and the doctrine of eternal damnation causes people to be very unchristlike and much more natural, carnally minded than we would care to think. Let me give you an example. Recently, my wife sent an email to a bunch of uh, with what you would call Messianic Jews, Jewish rabbis, Jews that believe in Jesus and, and their teachers. Instead of calling themselves pastors, most of them call themselves rabbis. My wife asked uh, about a hundred of these Messianic Jewish rabbis, what is the fate of those who were killed in the Holocaust? You see, my wife was raised Jewish and in all of her upbringing, she never was taught or heard that people go to hell. There wasn't a rabbi, there wasn't a Hasidic person. My wife, uh, she had a lot of religious people in, in her uh, family. Uh, the kind, you know, that would, you know, really orthodox, super, super uh, uh, strict Jews. She never heard from any of them uh, a warning about hell. At synagogue, when she went to get her bas mitzvah, nobody ever taught her about hell. And she pointed out that in the Torah, in the books of Moses, which is the foundation of Judaism, there isn't a trace of a place of everlasting punishment. And she asked these rabbis, these Messianic Jewish rabbis, what happens to the six million Jews that were killed in the Holocaust? Now these Messianic Jews, when they were Jews, uh, you know, traditional Jews, they had no concept of hell. They had no idea of eternal punishment. They may have thought you know, from, uh, from some of the rabbis that Gehenna, hell, uh, may last for a few months, but they would not have been taught under Judaism of a place of everlasting punishment. But when they converted and became Jew, uh, Jews that believe in Jesus became Messianic Jews and began to uh, join organizations of, uh, of uh, like-minded uh, rabbis, all of a sudden now they're preaching hell. They're teaching hell. And these, these Messianic Jewish rabbis, when asked what happened to those six million all they could hope for or say was maybe, maybe they accepted Jesus just before they died. Maybe some angel came and, and told them about Yeshua. Their, their answers to this question of what happens to the six million in, in uh, the Holocaust, their answers were pathetic. Now we plan on going back and, and emailing these, these rabbis and hope, hopefully at giving them some education as to you know, what caused the, ma the, the, the mind shift. Because the foundation of Christianity is Judaism. And if Moses never preached a place of eternal damnation, maybe these Messianic Jewish rabbis have picked up over this trans transformation um, some traditions of men that make the word of God of none effect. Think about this strange situation that we have based on this traditional teaching of hell. We have Hitler that everyone pretty much is convinced 
deserves to be burned forever and ever and ever in eternal flames. And he consigned millions of Jews to ovens in which their bodies are burned. And according to the traditional view, and according to many uh, Messianic Jewish rabbis' views, those six million Jews are in the same place that Hitler is in. Think, dear Christian, dear Catholic, dear Protestant, dear Messianic Jewish rabbi, think and ponder about that. And if your mind and your heart says something stinks here, something is not right, please visit tentmaker.org and visit whatthehelliselhell.com and visit Love Wins for a reasonable, scriptural, rational, loving explanation that verifies that the teaching of hell is a doctrine of demon. It's a tradition of men that makes the word of God of none effect. Jesus Christ is as the Bible says he is. He's the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. He's the Savior of the world. He is a love that never fails. Each and every person that has ever been born onto this planet is destined to return to God who created them. God is love. Jesus commanded his disciples to love their enemy, not go around the world in World War I and World War II and World War III, this insanity that's going around all over the world that Christians and Jews are involved in. Jesus said, love your enemies. There's the gospel. Jesus will love all. Jesus will love his enemies and Jesus will reconcile all mankind to himself through his death, his burial, and his resurrection. You can count on that. You can put hope on that. You can put your faith in that. Love never fails.